Uh, more than one and a half million pension pots are sitting unclaimed after owners changed jobs or moved house. It's a, clearly a huge issue, which Steph is taking a look at for us this morning. Hi, Steph. Hi, I'm on in. It's mega money when you put this into figures. Uh, but let me tell you a bit more about the story. Morning, everyone. Yeah, the average person in the UK moves house around eight times and will work in 11 different jobs. So I guess it's not a surprise, is it, that people can lose track of their letters from things like their bank accounts, etc. So new research published this morning by the Association of British Insurers has found there's a staggering £20 billion sitting in pension accounts and the average pot is worth £13,000. Well, I'm joined now by Michelle Cracknell, who's from the Pensions Advisory Service, an independent body that provides advice to the public on pensions. Morning to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it can sound a bit irresponsible to lose track of your pension, but it's easily done, isn't it? And just tell us a bit about why. Absolutely, because if you're working, an employer will put you into a pension scheme and you won't necessarily have any paperwork um, or even know that the money's coming out of your bank account because it's coming out of your salary. So the chances of losing your pension are quite high. And who would think about sending a change of address card to their employer? It's yeah. just not something that you do. And is this a problem then that's growing because of the fact that there's an auto-enrolment with pensions in companies now? Yes, there are more people joining pension schemes and so it's growing for that reason. I think the second reason why it's growing is that so much is online today so you don't even have a piece of paper that nudges you to actually go and find out pensions um, from your past employment history. So what can you do about it then? Well, you really should actually sit down and think about all of the companies that you've worked for and whether you have got a pension scheme to match each of your employments. Um, now, in the 80s, there were a lot of employments where you wouldn't have had a pension scheme. But as soon as you get into the 90s and the 2000s, the chances you, of you having a pension scheme, particularly if you were working for a large company, is really high. And so you should go, and go back to that company and ask, give me your date of birth, give me your national insurance number, and roughly when you worked for that company and see if you can find um, a pension in respect of that employment. How easy is it to do that if you've worked for lots of different companies and some of them are big companies? I mean, yeah. who do you even ring in the in the business? I can't say it's easy. It's actually quite difficult to do, but worth doing because there's quite a lot of money involved. Um, there is a government tracing service, um, the pension tracing service with a .gov.uk address. And if you look on that, then that can you can type in the name of your employer and it will give you the name and address of the administrator for that pension scheme. So that's a really good place to start. Um, we're a government public service. You can phone us up or you can look on our website and we also give you hints about whether you've got a pension and if you have, um, where you should go to try and trace it. So say you find out that you do have a pension pot with someone you previously worked for. What happens then? What, do you, what can you do about how can you get the money? Um, well, you may not be able to get hold of the money immediately, but the most important thing is to make sure that they know your contact details you keep details of them so you can keep telling them every time that you move so that when you do get to an age when you can start drawing pension which is the earliest age you can draw a pension is age 55 then you can contact them and get the benefit in certain cases if you've got lots of small pots you may actually want to take some get some help to see whether it's worth consolidating those all into one pot which is obviously easier to keep track of and obviously this is a big number we're talking about, £20 billion, but how common is it? I mean, this, is this a few people with lots of money or will there be lots of people out there who don't realise that they've got pension pots? There's lots of people. I mean, it's estimated that about um, two thirds of people have probably lost a pension along their career. Two thirds? Yeah. Wow. So it's, you know, because as you say, people are changing jobs, likely to have 11 jobs in their their working life so it's a really common problem so get back think about all the places you've worked and the chances are that you might have more pension than you think you've got yeah that's a bit of good news for people Michelle yeah. thank you very much I appreciate you coming in Thanks. and uh, you can use the government's pension tracing service to find out who runs your old scheme we've put the breakfast uh, the link on the breakfast Twitter page and on Facebook as well so have a look at that that is um, really quite extraordinary isn't it that yeah. so many people could be missing out thank you mentioned Netflix earlier and they've yes. added stacks of um, streamers, I suppose, uh, in the last few months. They? Yeah, they've had a really a good set of results that <clears throat> have just come out for the last quarter uh, figures. They've added 7 million subscribers, wow. which takes them to 137 million subscribers across the world. So, you know, this is the world's largest online TV 
uh, streaming service. And if you think about how much money they've spent in attracting them, that's why there's been a bit of um, doubt about whether Netflix can really actually do well here and whether it had reached its peak because they're spending something like eight billion pounds, billion pounds a year on their content and that is what's attracting the new subscribers because there's a lot of content you can't get on any other platform yeah. so the likes of the crown obviously it's a, a huge success for them orange is a new black that type of uh, thing has, has really made a big difference to them so some people were worried that maybe they'd spent too much money on that and they weren't going to get enough subscribers but what we've seen from these results is they've done it and the share price has gone up 14 percent overnight which is really good news for netflix um on the flip side of that, though, we've had results just out from Flybe, the airline, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, you know, big operator in the UK, uh, particularly for the kind of domestic flights. And they have put out a profit warning this morning saying, actually, times are, are pretty tough for them at the mm -hmm. minute. So they've downgraded what they think they're going to achieve in terms of their finances for the year. Um, so they say that's because of weak consumer demand. So not enough of us flying with them. Uh, also because of the value of the pound being low still, they're saying that that's put a lot of pressure on them and the higher fuel costs too so flyby not a great time for them at the moment although they, their chief executive has said this morning in the statement they think they are still able to cut down costs and therefore improve things okay. but it's still tough how many subscribers do you say Netflix had around? 137 million. All paying about, about £8 pounds a month? Yeah, it starts at 5 99 in the UK a month. Wow. So, yeah, big numbers. Yeah, serious dosh. Thank you very much. Thank this is a win for health campaigners. A cosmetic surgery advert that was shown during breaks in the reality show Love Island has actually been banned for being irresponsible and harmful. Steph's got the details. Well, yeah, this I remember is, you talking to the boss of ITV yeah, about this, Steph. Exactly. We're going to show a quick clip of that as well. But let's just remind everyone what's happened with this story. It's something we talked about in the summer when Love Island was on. Morning, everyone. There were complaints that some adverts, which were shown around the time of the hit show, we're exploiting the body and image insecurities of viewers watching, a lot of whom, of course, were young people. Now, the Advertising Standards Authority has agreed that this is the case with this particular advert for breast enlargement surgery. It's a TV advert for a company called MYA. We're just showing the still here because the watchdog has now banned the advert. Now, as Dan mentioned there, you might, might remember the controversy surrounding the ads is something I talked to the boss of ITV about in July. And here's what Carolyn McCall had to say about it. My judgment, and that's my judgment, is that they, the juxtaposition of a tiny fraction, tiny fraction of what we did, and that was on Hub only, not on our broadcast channel, may not have been quite right. The juxtaposition of the advertising. And we are looking at that, and we will take our own action. But we are highly regulated, and we haven't actually done anything wrong as far as that is concerned. We take our duty of care to the contestants extremely seriously. So no more so, diet pills or breast enlargement ads in the middle of it? Uh, I don't know where you've seen those. Actually, you must be an avid, avid viewer of I have, I have seen them. OK, so you must be watching The Hub and watching it all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, so well I, you done. Know, that's lots brilliant. of people are. Brilliant. I'm not disputing well, right, that, but you know, I look, am disputing the fact that, you know, you've so, got these ads running. So are you going to stop? We, I have just said what I've just said, which right. is we're highly regulated and we are compliant and that we are looking and monitoring that. Quite a punchy interview there uh, with myself and uh, Carolyn McCall, the boss of ITV. And it's really important to point out at this, uh, at this point that the Advertising Standards Authority doesn't blame ITV for airing the advert, but said the company behind it implied that the women were only able to enjoy the aspirational lifestyle shown and to be happy with their bodies because they had undergone this surgery. So that was the implication from this advert, is what the Advertising Standards Authority said. So where does that leave things now? Well, let's talk to Claire Murdoch, who's Mental Health Director at NHS England. Uh, good morning to you, Claire. Uh, NHS England were quite vocal about this at the time, weren't they, and did put in a complaint about it? We were vocal at the time. We felt very strongly that young people, there's a growing body of evidence that tells us that young people are experiencing greater and greater pressures around body image, idealised body images, um, uh, images of an idealised lifestyle, and that actually we were calling on the Advertising Standards Authority to act in the case of this particular advert, but to also send a warning shot um, to others who are making adverts like this. Young people themselves are telling us that they are suffering as a result of 
bombardment and manipulative um, adverts, social media campaigns, um, encouraging them to be discontented with their bodies. You know, and what this does is it can really drive anxiety, depression, sleeplessness, self-harm and other mental health problems that can become really problematic. And whilst the NHS, of course, is looking at increasing the range of services that we're offering to young people, and indeed we've got a massive expansion programme in train now, including around eating disorders, the NHS alone cannot pick up the pieces of irresponsible and harmful behaviours of advertisers and others. So what difference do you think the banning of this advert will make? Because it's obviously already gone out now. It went out during the time that Love Island was on, so it's already been out there. But do you think this will send a warning to other companies now? I really hope that it does send a warning to other companies. It was obvious to myself, Simon Stevens, the head of the NHS and others, that when this advert was aired in the context it was aired within, that it was just wrong and that it was irresponsible and harmful. I think other advertisers, other companies, the industry itself and social media need to take a long, hard look now, not only um, in light of this ruling, which we really welcome, um, but also in light of what people are saying, whether it's experts from across the field where there is this growing body of evidence, or young people themselves. Um, last year, the youth parliament that sits um, held a health select committee and a million young people voted for the issue of that health select, the subject of that health select committee, to be body image. And that report, I commend it to you because it's obvious to young people themselves that advertisers, social media and others need to take greater responsibility for what's airing and what they're being bombarded with. Yeah. So I hope this ruling sends a warning shot and that more regulations not needed that people actually behave much more responsibly and take on um, that responsibility for the mental health well-being and resilience of our young people yeah an important message Claire, Claire mm. Murdoch thank you very much for your time this morning it's Claire there from NHS England Netflix added nearly 7 million new customers in the three months to September. Steph is here with more details and just staggering the kind of numbers of people they have subscribed. Yes, because they now have 137 million customers. Mm -hmm. So subscribers who are paying this monthly fee to them. So yeah, worth a lot of money for them. And it's a key time for them at the moment because there'd been some scepticism about whether they could actually carry on growing as fast as they had been. Oh, I think you've got a message. That'll be someone from your Netflix subscriber asking, uh, <laughs> pointing out what's coming up. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's one which is, people were worried about because they thought it wasn't going to carry carry on getting as many customers, mm -hmm. but they have done so. They've actually beaten expectations with this because there was some as well concern about the debt which they've taken on in order to provide all this original content that's attracted the customers because they're, they're expected to spend eight billion pounds on new content this year, original content. So things like the crown and you know house of cards orange is a new black all those types of things stranger things um, and that's what the, the, the investors were worried about was were they going to be able to carry on growing and be able to pay for all of this content and Dan mentioned earlier that we don't know about viewing figures no they don't release their ratings on how many people are actually watching individual shows which is interesting mm. uh, it's a that yeah they keep it secret lots of other shows like ours will tell uh, tell the world how many people are watching but they don't for whatever yeah. reason I guess yeah. for commercial reasons because then we could work out which program is the most successful for them and right yeah maybe they don't want to give it away but it's so interesting that it started as a DVD rental service mm. and now is literally the world's largest online streaming service thank you very much they are a significant